Okay, hi there. Welcome to a macro video. Uh, we're going to spend a few minutes thinking about the important difference between a cyclical and a structural trade deficit for a country. So first of all, what do we mean by the concept a trade deficit? Well, the key emphasis here is going to be on the word value. Trade deficits occur when the value of a country's imports the goods and services they import into the country exceeds the value of exports sold overseas for a country over a given period of time. A common exam mistake is to define a trade deficit in terms of the quantity of imports and exports. You need to get this right. Trade deficit is simply the value of a country's imports exceeding the value of a country's exports. What about the UK economy? Does the UK run a trade deficit or a trade surplus? What do you think? Well, in 2020, we exported goods and services worth over £570 billion, but our imports, accumulated value of imports, total £581 billion. So therefore, there was a trade deficit in goods and services of £10 billion. We actually run a huge deficit in goods, physical or tangible goods like oil and motor cars, partially offset uh, by a surplus of £106 billion on trade in services. So the UK generally imports more in value terms than it exports, meaning that it runs meaning that it runs a trade deficit. So what do we mean by a cyclical trade deficit? Well, this is when a country's trade balance in goods and services deteriorates, in other words, they're importing more than they're exporting, particularly during a period of phase of rapid economic growth. If there's an increase in national income and spending, people will have more disposable income to consume goods and services. And if domestic producers cannot meet that demand, then consumers will often have to import products from overseas. So typically when a country is growing quickly, it runs quite a big cyclical trade deficit. But we have to adjust there for instance for the impact of the economic cycle. What do we mean by a structural trade deficit? Well, the emphasis here is on the on the supply side weaknesses in a country. So a structural trade deficit uh, is, is one which happens independent of where you are in the economic cycle. In a sense, it's a long term concept uh, that arises due to supply side weaknesses in a country rather than a short term cyclical change in GDP or the value of a currency. And structural trade deficits are often caused by relatively poor levels of competitiveness. So the emphasis here on the word relative, such as the performances of businesses and things relative to other other competitive businesses in other countries. So here's the UK data, quarterly data since 2008. The trade balance is in the blue histograms on the left hand axis. The trade balance as a share of GDP is on the right hand axis. And uh, you can see that most years, well, pretty much every year, the UK runs a trade deficit in goods and services. So in that sense, some of the deficit must be must be structural because we're running it pretty much every year. Slight caution on the data here due to the combined impacts of the coronavirus, uh, the pandemic and the lockdown and the UK's exit from the European Union. The value of trade in and out of the UK has not not been normal in recent months in certainly in around 2020, the end of 2020 into 2021. So the comparisons, for example, with the data in 2019, 2020 really have to be treated with degree of caution. And these are the countries in the world which had the highest trade balance deficit in 2019. We're expressing all of these figures in US dollars. The United States indeed runs the highest trade deficit in the world measured in billions of dollars, just under a trillion dollars. The UK came second, actually. India and France and even Hong Kong were in a big trade deficit. Countries like Turkey and Greece and and uh, South Africa. Other nations other than USA might have a higher deficit when the data is expressed as a share of their GDP. This is just purely in dollar terms. So what are the main causes of a cyclical trade deficit? Well, the main one is basically when there's a cyclical period of fast above trend growth. So typically when countries are growing pretty quickly, when they're in the boom phase of an economic cycle, there's a surge in the volume and value of imported components, raw materials and finished products. Just the nature of the thing, countries that are growing quickly often 
they have to import the raw materials and the component parts, etc. Uh, often a cyclical trade deficit can be caused by a cyclical increase in the world prices of commodities. If you're if you think about India, for example, if the world economy picks up, the price of oil goes up, let's say, India is a net importer of oil and therefore their trade def their trade balance will deteriorate. We normally associate a growing cyclical trade deficit with a period when the, the real incomes, the living standards, the disposable incomes of consumers are increasing. They therefore spend more and that triggers an increase in the demand for imports. Particularly, and here's a really key concept coming up, particularly when the marginal propensity to import is high. When there's a high income elasticity of demand for imports, we tend to suck in more imported products. And another cyclical factor could be uh, a strong, perhaps overvalued exchange rate. You see a strong pound, for example, remember the acronym SPICED, strong pound makes imports cheaper and exports dearer, exports more expensive. And that can cause a, a change in demand for imports and exports. And another cyclical cause could be a recession in the economy or economies of major trade partners. So, for example, if the United States goes into a downturn, the UK might find its exports suffering. That could be a cyclical factor in another country affecting, um, affecting another country's trade position. So normally, cyclical trade deficit gets worse when the economy is in the boom phase of, a, of an economic cycle. Normally, you see the size of a trade deficit will go, will go up. What about structural deficits? Now, of course, structural causes refer mainly to longer term factors, longer term changes in the economy structure and also their supply side competitiveness. So countries running persistent trade deficits might be affected by a relatively low level of investment by businesses in new capital, which limits their productive capacity. They might be being held back by relatively low labour productivity, efficiency of labour, and perhaps even a combination of high wages and low productivity means that the country's relative unit labour costs are high, again, compared to contrasted with other countries. Typically, you know, manufacturing and demand and sales goes to countries where the unit labour costs are lowest. It could be that there's a long-term decline in the world price of a country's major export, or a long-term decline in the size of a major export sector, such as whatever, textiles or manufacturing or oil and gas. And then there's a whole series of other factors related to what we call non-price factors. So exporters finding it hard to compete, perhaps because of weaknesses in design, brand value, brand, in, brand impact, product performance, and, and other non-price factors. So essentially, a structural trade deficit is the accumulation, the result of uh, a number of supply side weaknesses, which of course have to be addressed by supply side policies. Worth bearing in mind also that trade deficits are linked to the stage of economic development that a country might have reached. So the number of emerging developing countries running quite big trade deficits, it's partly because of fast growth, cyclical causes, but also because from a structural point of view, they don't have the capacity to make the capital equipment that they're going to be using. So they have to import capital equipment and specific components that they cannot yet produce themselves. So if you get a question on the trade position, the balance of payments, underlying causes of deficits, it's a great evaluation point to think about the difference between cyclical and structural trade deficits. And I hope this short video may have been of some use to you in explaining that. Thanks everybody, take care and see you again next time.